Hello, my dear friend. I'm going to talk about self-authority in this video and why it is so, so deeply important for anybody walking the spiritual path to gain and grow into a genuine self-authority. First of all, what is self-authority? Self-authority, contrary to what maybe many people think, is not just being always on my own or being able to be an individual that doesn't ask the help of others, but rather arriving to a place of maturity within myself or yourself where I am sufficiently crystallized, I sufficiently know myself, I have sufficiently unburdened myself of certain unnecessary layers, conditioning of parents, society, culture, friends, and past experiences, so that I know myself, I know my unique light, I know my unique vibration, I know very intimately my unique structure, and I become more like um, this pristine flower that I am, okay? This unique flower that I am. If I'm a rose, I cannot be a jasmine. If I'm a jasmine, I cannot be a tree. If I'm a certain tree, if I'm an oak tree, I cannot be um, a pine tree. Every phenomenon in nature has its play and place. And so do you. Self-authority doesn't mean that I know everything. Okay? And it doesn't mean that I pretend to be very strong and assertive. As a matter of fact, self-authority is very solid, stable, and quiet. Why? Because when I know myself, when I am an authority, yes, meaning I'm relying on myself deeply, trusting myself deeply, I don't need to show off. I don't need to brag about this. I don't need to prove this to others. I simply walk my path quietly and humbly. Now, why is self-authority so important? You see, when we start off the spiritual path, we start off by um, listening to videos, um, maybe reading books, perhaps meeting spiritual teachers, um, reading uh, ancient scriptures, and we follow certain paths. These paths are kind of already paved for us to give us some kind of um, um, hints, we can say, some, some guidelines as to where we should go. But for those of you who go deeper into the spiritual path of self-realization, of self-knowledge, of wisdom, what happens is that the deeper you go, the less you're going to find a roadmap. And as the Buddha said, and rightfully so, you're going to have to be a light unto yourself. Which means that no matter what the teachers said, no matter what all the tradition said, you will have to simply walk alone in an unpaved territory and discover for yourself what is real, what is reality. You will have to take the risk of not knowing and discovering for yourself. Because the honest discovery, the honest self-knowledge has to be original. It has to be first source. You have, you have to be the one knowing it. It cannot be borrowed by anybody else. If it's borrowed, it's not authentic. It's not alive. It's not real. You see? So you must develop self-authority. Now, another reason, say you're following a spiritual teacher, and maybe this is a wonderful spiritual teacher, very helpful spiritual teacher. The question is this, if your teacher dies tomorrow, can you trust yourself that you can listen to the wisdom within, to the living wisdom of the Tao, of reality, of the moment? And can you follow it deeply? Can you follow it through? Can you listen to the wisdom of your soul and follow it through? Can you trust yourself to see clearly with clean and clear eyes, with clarity? Can you see into the nature of things? Can you hear the deep impulses of the universe and how it wants to flow through you moment to moment when something has come to an end and when something needs to start and begin when the seasons change for you when there's a calling for the next step when there's a calling to stick to what you do you see you have to be able to 
to have a profound, solid, reliable self-authority. And self-authority is already a deep spiritual achievement. It means you're crystallized. And any authentic spiritual teacher and any authentic spiritual student will work towards this goal, towards developing true independence inside of you, true autonomy. You have to become the author, right? Authority, self-authority. The author. The author is the one writing the book. There's nobody else behind the author telling him the story. It's his own direct wisdom, his own direct creativity, his own direct sensitivity. The author is the one who decides where she wants to go. The author doesn't ask, doesn't ask other people. She can ask them from time to time if it's needed, but it's out of her own authority that she's asking. It's not because her teacher told her to. It's not because a book told her that's how it's supposed to be. You see, in the end of the day, all these words, awakening and enlightenment and oneness, what do they mean? Are you just copying a certain state you heard from someone you deem as awakened or a spiritual teacher or an enlightened being? Do you try to replicate a certain experience? If you are, then you're not experiencing something authentic. You see, because the mind can fabricate any kind of experience. You must come to a place where you walk in the unknown and deeply enjoy walking in the unknown. Discovering for yourself, activating your own wisdom, your own heart and passion. Not in any kind of new age irresponsible way, which means disconnecting yourself from true inspirations, from true teachers, not being able to open your heart to really learn. No, it's not about that. It's about using any teacher you meet in a wise, loving and intelligent way so you really grow to a place of self-authority. You have to be able to eventually stand on your own two feet. That means being a grown-up. Spiritually speaking. So you have to have self-authority because that's the light that guides you on the path. And in the end of the day, you are alone. We are all alone. We're all alone in the end of the day. You must develop self-authority. So if you're a real student of truth, if you're a real lover of truth, you should be very, very clear about your intention to grow in self-authority. Take full ownership on your path, of your path, and on your path. And whatever teacher you choose, make sure that you come there with responsibility to learn and to, and to own your journey as well. And make sure that the teacher truly cares for the development of your own self-authority. Wants you to be strong and free, emancipated, independent relying on your own wisdom. I hope you take these words deeply and seriously and that they affect the way you walk on your spiritual path and the way you practice your own spiritual practice and the way you relate to your own spiritual teacher, if you have one. Blessings.